Imagine a world without excessive greenhouse gas emissions or toxic waste from energy plants, where there is enough renewable energy for everyone and where nations have independence over their energy supply. This utopia is often promised with the insane technology of nuclear fusion on Earth. While nuclear fusion's ability to satisfy these claims is a minefield of discussions within itself, it could definitely shift us towards these aims. That is, if energy from it can be captured commercially. Unfortunately, sustained nuclear fusion is no easy task. But if anyone has a chance at making a breakthrough, I would give NASA some pretty good odds. In this video, we'll uncover their latest developments into fusion energy. This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Space travel has helped the development of many items we use every day, from phone cameras and wireless headphones to memory foam and ear thermometers. So it's not really surprising that it could also motivate the development of systems that provide the energy we use every day too. But what are NASA's motivations for fusion energy and how has it led to such a paradigm shift in fusion power? When exploring deep space, there are some serious energy demands. Historically, this energy has come from solar panels, fuel cells, or radioisotope thermoelectric generators. These RTGs use the heat of decaying plutonium-238 to create electricity. But with a conversion efficiency of only 7.5%, a reasonably sized system cannot meet the needs of ever complex and far-reaching space missions. Therefore, NASA has its eye on fusion. But even if we master fusion on Earth, the current methods of using magnets to confine plasma over five times hotter than the sun's core, or shooting high-powered lasers at a fuel pellet, may not be the best idea aboard a spacecraft. These two methods are called magnetic and inertial confinement, but NASA has a completely different idea. Their new method is called lattice confinement fusion, and it has the potential to completely redefine fusion energy. Scientists and engineers at NASA's Glenn Research Center in Cleveland are hoping lattice confinement fusion could one day power small robots on the surface of Mars. But as it promises to offer less expensive, smaller and safer way of harnessing nuclear fusion, it could also be used on Earth to power the devices you're watching this video on too. In order to make a fusion reaction occur, the electrostatic effect that repels two positively charged nuclei must be overcome so that they can fuse. This is known as the Coulomb barrier. Overcoming this barrier is very hard, so very high temperatures and pressures are used to increase the chances of it happening. Lattice confinement, however, uses some other tricks to help this process happen. Lattice confinement fusion starts by saturating the lattice structure of metals such as erbium and titanium with deuterium ions. Interestingly, no tritium is used. This is interesting and important because efforts up until now have focused on fusing deuterium and tritium. Whilst deuterium is a plentiful resource available in our oceans, tritium is more difficult to get hold of and the most reliable source is from nuclear fission reactors, which fusion aims to replace. With the lattice structure of the metal saturated with deuterium ions, the density at which they are packed is truly mind-blowing. For context, it is 1 billion times denser than the plasma in a tokamak reactor, and maintain this indefinitely at room temperature. Inertial confinement can reach slightly higher densities, but only for a brief moment with the use of a high-powered laser. Inside the lattice, there is now a dense, cold plasma of deuterons. Because each of these deuterons is hidden in their own pouch of the lattice, they are also hidden from each other. This is really useful because it means they're less likely to repel each other, further increasing the chances of a successful fusion reaction. Now the lattice is ready, it can be stored until we want to kickstart the fusion reaction. We do this using a dynamotron electron beam accelerator. This uses an electron beam to create gamma rays which pass into the titanium or erbium holding our deuterium ions. In the experiments by NASA, these are stored in small vials. When a gamma ray with enough energy hits one of the deuterons, it splits into a proton and neutron. From here, the process of harnessing fusion energy can begin. The neutron shoots off and can collide with a deuteron. This deuteron is then hit like a pull ball and can collide with another deuteron in the lattice. 
This causes a fusion reaction and produces heat, which could eventually be harnessed for electricity. Alternatively, the proton or neutron from the original deuteron may be absorbed by the lattice structure. As the deuterons fuse and fusion energy is produced, the metal lattice heats up above room temperature, but nowhere near the 100 million degrees Celsius in other forms of fusion reactors. This is because the hot regions are just tens of micrometers across, which is much more efficient as it doesn't have to heat up all of the fuel. However, this isn't to be confused with cold fusion, as pockets of heat are still required. Despite all of the great work, there are still barriers to overcome. For example, the use of a dynamotron to create the gamma rays is energy intensive, and the reactions need to be made self-sustaining. However, if the reaction rates can be significantly boosted, NASA's new fusion breakthrough could open a new door for clean nuclear energy, both in space and for those of us on Earth. If fusion energy is going to revolutionize our energy system, you probably want to know more about it. Thankfully, the sponsor Brilliant has an incredible interactive course on it that you can try for free with the link below. They also have over 60 other courses on STEM topics, including solar energy and astrophysics, which are all included in a Brilliant subscription. I've really enjoyed working through a number of their courses, and I'm sure you will too. And if you use the link in the description, the first 200 subscribers can get 20% off. Each course is split into bite-sized sections to make it easier to learn and can help anyone curious about topics in STEM learn about the universe and the things inside it. Check out Brilliant in the link below.